Hey everyone, it's Joan Isaias here from The Automator. And this video, we all think of auto hockey as being case insensitive, right? And what we realize there's, there are actually a lot of times that it is case sensitive and there's some that can be optionally case sensitive. So we are going to cover in this video 10 times where auto hockey is actually case sensitive. Six are kind of where they're optional. And then there's actually a bonus gotcha, which we just learned in the hero call the other day. We were working through something and Isaias was like, well, we found a bug. No, we didn't, but we're so stick around to the end to watch <laughs> yeah. that one. All right, so uh, let's start with the case sensitivity. So in auto hockey, uh, the first one that we will notice right away is window titles. Whenever you use any of the functions like win activate, win exist, win restore, any of the, uh, the functions that have to do with window titles, they are case sensitive by default. You can actually optimally make them case insensitive, but normally they are case sensitive. So as soon as, that's one of the reasons why we usually use a Windows title. And when I see the, the title, I copy it and paste it instead of me typing it. <laughs> Which another, just on that same line is why we highly recommend it because sometimes like here in the word window titles, it's a space, sometimes it's not. And it's right. just better to copy and paste when you're using that, when you're using your search. So just that right. The next one that we, usually fall for this particular trap is maps. So map is a type of object in our hockey. You have the arrays, you have the strings and so on. One of those types of objects are maps. Maps, as soon as you create them, they are case sensitive by default. So if you save two different keys, if one of them is kept capitalized and the other one isn't, you're referring to two different keys. So you have to be careful with that. And again, this one, it has an option to turn it off if you want to, but it starts on by default, which is kind of weird because our hotkey is not case sensitive. Anywhere else is in just in these little situations, right? That you have to be aware of. Next one is the switch command. Um, the switch is basically like an if and else statement, for example, in which you give it a list of options when something you check a variable, and if that variable has one of those options, one of those uh, values, it would go ahead and uh, perform certain actions. But the thing is, when you're checking the case, because it's, that's how it goes, a switch case statement, the case is case sensitive by default. So if you so if you put that the variable is going to have the, the word true, and you make it all lowercase, but the variable actually has the word true with an uppercase T, it's not going to happen. It's not going to work. <laughs> so be careful with it. Right. Next up, we have com objects from other languages specifically. And this is a little bit more on the advanced side, but we have noticed, for example, if we load the JavaScript object from the scripting language, Windows has a common object um, that allows us to connect to VBA and to JavaScript, direct or JScript to be more specific. Right. Directly from the computer because they're, they're different, right? But when you grab those objects and put in a variable in our hotkey, in many situations, not all of them, in some of them, like JavaScript, we were using a JavaScript uh, um, object a few days ago. And what happened is that the variables, when you write them down, you have to use the case that the JavaScript language uses for that variable. Um, and and uh, if you don't do that, the variable is going to either throw an error because it doesn't exist or be empty. And I'm like, oh, gee. So you have to be yep. careful there with those. And correct me if I'm wrong on this one. If you're using UIA and you're accessing something, or is it sometime when you're matching, are those case sensitive? There are certain, yeah. So when, when you're matching, it, it happens as well. It, because, like, again, you're looking at a different language, right? Right. I was going to say also was that with a, um, a Win HTTP request, an API call, that get or post text, like that is the HTTP protocol, mm -hmm. and you need to make sure that is uppercase. Like it is right. Kind of Many, many servers just don't like it when you send them lowercase, they don't handle it. Now, the next one is regular expressions. And this one is because, again, you're accessing a different language. The regular expressions are a language of, of their own, right? And our hotkey has a way to access that language in a built-in way, right? But now you have to follow the, the um, rules of that language and that, language is case sensitive because you're matching stuff. I think that's kind of like a common theme. 
if we're matching things, like for example, we're matching window titles, we want to make sure that we're matching what we really care about and not something by mistake. And probably that's the reason why they are case sensitive by the Next up, we have the strict comparison. And that just means whenever you're using an if statement, you can say, if the uh, variable equals 10, that is not a strict comparison out of hotkey when you use an equal sign. It just checks if the two are similar. For example, it ignores case sensitivity. But if you use two equal signs, one after the other, then we're using what is called strict comparison. And at that point, not only it has to be the same type, but it also has to match the same case in the case of strings, by the way. So I just thought that meant it really equals it. <laughs> it really, really is. <laughs> right. yeah. Basically, that's exactly what it means. And um, the next one is format time. That is a function, very cool little function in which you pass the A now variable, right? Or any date formatted like that. And But then you can convert the formatting to something else. Like, for example, you want to show the, the full year and then just one digit for the month and one digit for the, the, the day. You can do that. You will specify that format and it will do it for you. Um, but if you want it a different way, like you want 24-hour format for the, for the time, you, have, you can tell it to do that. You just give it a variable and it formats it however you want and very, very easily. But you have to be careful because months and minutes, they both start with the letter M. So capital M refers to the month, lowercase m refers to the minutes. And for that one reason, then it is already yet case sensitive. It makes a difference whether you use uppercase M and lowercase. And the same happens with the hours. If you use uppercase H, it is a 24 hour format. If you use lowercase H, is this the 12 hour format? So there you go, another situation with that, right? This also happens with the loop parse command. When you're parsing a string and you're going character by character or word by word, the delimiter, when you set it up, it is case sensitive. It's not the same if you parse in lowercase t, for example, than if you parse on uppercase t. That they, they, the parser will look at them as differently. And it would give you different strings if you do that, if you don't set up the one that you care of. So be careful with that one. String split is on the same vein. It's a type of parser in which you give it a string and you tell it how you're going to split that string in particular. And again, you are giving it a delimiter. And this is also kind of like keeping track of whether it's lowercase or uppercase. These two functions, we made it one because they're basically related to one another. This guy, you give it a character, for example, the letter A, and it returns the number, the ASCII character or number for that character. This one does the opposite. You give it a number, and then it returns the character. So they're related. The only thing is that you have to understand that in the ASCII um, table, uppercase A and lowercase A, they have different numbers. For that reason, these two functions are case sensitive. If you put an uppercase A, you're going to get a number. But if you put lowercase A, you would get a different number. So be careful with that if you're looking for something that is not. Um, again, and this is relying on a different language because we're looking at, at the ASCII table. It has nothing to do with our hotkey. So the ASCII table is like that. And for that reason, you have to be careful, right? So those are the cases that the case sensitivity matters. That doesn't mean that this is the only places <laughs> where this would happen. Uh, the bonus one that we have today, we figured it out recently, like, holy crap, that I didn't know that one. <laughs> you know? So uh, this list is not uh, the full list. This is just the one that we are confident and we know that this is case sensitive. Now here, we're going to talk about now the ones that can be made case sensitive. That means they are not case sensitive by default, but you have an option or a parameter that you can set up to make it case sensitive. Like for example, hot strings. Whenever you're creating hot strings, either with the static way of creating them or by using the hot strings command, there are ways to set up in the options that that hot string that you created 
should be case sensitive or ignore the the casing. By default, they don't follow your, they're not case sensitive so, unless you make them so. I had one we were working with SPSS that if I typed it lowercase, I always wanted it to actually replace it with uppercase. But if I typed it uppercase, it didn't do anything because it, it knew right. it was weak. Right. Now, down here, this is a V2 specific one. In, um, in V1, we have a different way of doing these kind of things, but the input hook object um, is an object that once you create it, normally it is not case sensitive, but it has a property that you can set up to say, no, this input hook makes a distinction between different cases. Again, you can make it case sensitive. Then we have the in string function in which you give it a variable and you're checking if that particular variable contains a specific string. And one of the parameters of this function is whether you're looking for a case sensitive string. Again, starts off as not case sensitive. The sort command happens to be one of those that again, it, it doesn't it doesn't matter how you put it, it will sort it correctly, independent of the case, but you have a parameter to say, hey, no, when, when you're sorting, make sure that the ones that are uppercase go into a different section of my list, for example. Next one is the string compare. Now, string compare and in string, they're similar in certain things, but the string compare also has, similarly to the in string, a parameter that you can make it um, case sensitive and string replace. Now, I usually use regex replace, and for that reason, it starts case sensitive, and I make it case insensitive. But string replace is not a regular expression matching, right? And for that reason, as it is not a regular expression, then it starts in case insensitive, but you can make it case sensitive with an option that you can choose later on. And those are the ones that I was going to talk about. Those are the 16 basic ones that you just have to keep in mind. They're not, they're not, well, at least the 10 above. They're, they're not the standard way how we think about our hotkey. And when we say, hey, our hotkey is case sensitive, then you have to put a little asterisk and say, except this 10 times. <laughs> so let's get into that bonus one, which really would trip you up. Now, granted, it's not often we do stuff like this example we're going to cover, but if right. you do try it, uh, that was during a hero call. Someone was trying to do something, and it it wasn't working the expected way. The way we were thinking. So um, let's do this. Let's just let me get this guy to get the title of this window. And this is what we're looking for. So this is our title, class and N. Let me just make sure that this is smaller here. This, and this is what we're referring to. When you're matching a window, especially if you do not have the title match mode in here, it will look up a window that is that has this title and at the same time has this class and at the same time has this uh, this S at the executable. Now you can use the set tile match mode to make this a regular expression, which means that I should be able to put the asterisk here in the title if I want to match it. And that would work if I have a window that is um, that has the AHK toolkit, starts with that, and then it has anything else after that, right? And I could just, just cut it here, like tool, right? Or a hotkey tool, whatever else it has. This works, that's totally fine. But remember, regular expressions are case sensitive. So if I want to make it case insensitive, I would have to put this option here to say, hey, the case sensitivity, I want you to turn it off. And if I type it out with lowercase like this, no problem. That's how it works. That's what's going on, right? Now, let's back up a step. And remember that normally I can do this. I could put a title followed by a class, followed by a thing. So this is where it becomes really weird. You would expect that if you put an I here, then this is case insensitive. 
that's where she would be wrong. <laughs> After reading and even reporting a bug and everything, somebody explained to me, hold on, these guys right here, they are kind of like their own sub subgroups of regular expression. So each of them must be made case insensitive individually. And that's the part that I was kind of like confused about. Even though I put the I option here for the title, that would work for the title. But right here, if I misspelled that and made it lowercase, it would never find the window because it is not spelled correctly. And that one is case sensitive. So I would have to make that one specifically case insensitive, which is the part that I was kind of like, what is going on in here? Like you could set the I option in two different places, but then when they explain each section like this is behaving as a separate regular expression, then it started to make some sort of sense. And now I could do this and make sure, and, and, I, and I don't have to follow the case sensitivity. And this happens for each of the sections. So the EXE, the class, they are treated as individual things. So <laughs> hopefully this would save you from some headaches down the line because I spent a few uh, minutes, I don't know, 30, one hour, trying to figure out why the thing was not doing what I was expecting until I understood this little part in here and the case sensitivity with the regular expression. Now, there was one other one, which we uh, also uncovered during a hero call. I think Scott was trying to use his installed program files location. Remember that? And it yes. had something to do with AutoHockey itself. Like, it had to be the exact case of how AutoHockey is spelled in the way, like, he installed it, and he didn't yes. have the exact same I case. I remember. I remember. But you reported that bug, and I think Lexicos actually fixed that. But it was it was a really right. funny, weird one. Um, yeah. Thankfully, that's that taken care of. So that's why it didn't make our cut. But Right. There you go. So hopefully this is helpful to you, and hopefully it will save you from some headaches that might be down the line. Yeah. Um, remember to like the video if you learned something and really helped us out. We have over uh, 1,500 videos on YouTube right now. By the way, we're coming, we're by far the largest auto hockey channel, but we're nearly at 10,000 subscribers. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. It really helps us. Have an awesome day. Cheers. Bye.